Welcome to the Jay and Brian Show, the fastest growing talk show podcast in America. Join Jay and Brian for unscripted, thought-provoking, and entertaining conversations about life, business, and the world we live in. Tune in as they spotlight influential communicators, business leaders, and personalities from sports to entertainment. Here now, Jay and Brian. Welcome to the Jay and Brian Show. Today, we are super excited to have our special guest. Uh, He's an author, he's a speaker, and he's also a property investor, and his name is Jeremy Jernigan. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to have you. Awesome having you here. Yeah. Jeremy wears lots of hats, but you were going to get into that, so. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. I was excited to see where you're going to go with the introduction. <laughs> Did you like it? You had a few options. Yeah, well, hopefully <laughs> hopefully there was enough energy and that was exciting enough I, for you. I'm in it. Let's All right. go. All right, let's do it. So, Jeremy has, uh, has done a lot of different things, and uh, I, we want to hear today about your adventures. So, I know that... Uh, Go ahead, Brian. I was just gonna say he's a dad, also, right? Yeah. Yep. You know, that we we thought, how fun would it be to have Jeremy on the show who can identify with us on a lot of these crazy issues that we deal with raising kids, especially in this world. Raising five kids. Yep. yep. That's a lot. Yep. It it is probably too much. Yeah. And you have uh, you have a couple adopted kids too, correct? We do. Yeah. Yeah. Our little guys are are uh, we fostered and adopted them. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And how's that experience been so far as a dad? Oof, that is that is brutally hard. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you there. Uh, fostering is one of those things. Believed in it, thought it. You know, it's awesome. Uh, you, you think it's hard when you begin and you're in the foster system. And there's all those challenges, and then you know, adoption's kind of seen as like the finish line. Hmm. It's not the finish line. That's the the next the next season. It's like where you're just beginning now. Like now you're gonna raise kids that most of the time have unique challenges yep. that our biological kids don't have. And you've entered into that. And so, you know, one of them has autism. One of them has ADHD. Both of those have been unique challenges to try to raise, oh, you know, and yeah. figure out. And so we're constantly learning and every day is, is, is a little tricky. It's tricky. Yeah. Way tricky. So we met uh, probably, what do you think, like six, seven years ago and through church, yep. uh, Jeremy was our life group leader. He was a, an executive pastor on, uh, on staff for a large uh evangelical evangelical church here in Mm -hmm. phoenix and uh, we got to know each other our families got to be close and then jeremy had the opportunity to take a lead pastor position up in the pacific northwest you want to tell us a little bit about that all the way from arizona to the pacific northwest yeah that must have been quite the it was funny because everyone's like you know it rains there and i grew up in arizona and i'm like Yes, I'm ready for seasons. And so I actually loved the rain. And uh, it was funny when I moved there, everyone's like, you got to take vitamin D supplements because you're not going to get the sun. And the funny part is I had already been taking vitamin D because in Arizona, the sun will kill you. So we all stay inside and we don't get a ton of sun because it's like, no, that hurts. I'm like, no, I'm already on. You know, my doctor's already put it on. And they're like, oh, okay, great. Uh, no, I loved it. I loved uh, Oregon. I, I fell in love. It was funny before we had interviewed at the church, I'd never even been to Oregon for. And so it was kind of like, yeah, I'm intrigued. Let's go see it. And the weather won me over. The landscape is incredible. It's wine country. Then I discovered wine country, which has led to some of the things that maybe we'll talk about. Was it really rainy where you were? Was it? Uh, Yeah, it it does rain in Oregon, but here's what you got to understand. Like when it rains in Arizona, it usually dumps for like a brief period of 10, 20 minutes, everything's flooded, you know, and yeah, it's yeah. a mess and muddy. That's not how it rains there. My favorite rain and the most common rain is like you'd be driving and you have your windshield wipers in the lowest setting, just the nice okay. slow like setting. Yeah. Yes. It's just this Heavy relaxing, mist. but you could actually breathe. Cause I don't know if you guys know this, but like when there's like plants and trees, it's good for like the air and there's they're mm-hmm. everywhere there and they're green and they're green because it <laughs> rains. It's weird. So yeah, we fell in love with it. Uh, it was a dream job for me. So I got to go be the lead pastor. You know, we kind of talk about like a lot of us are in our career and you're like, Hey, someday maybe I could do that, whatever mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. for me, that was it. And then realized it wasn't, what I ultimately wanted and uh, had a choice at one I point. Think a lot of people can identify with that. Yeah, I, I suspect I'm not alone on that. <laughs> and I uh, had to make some tough decisions on, okay, what kind of a lead pastor do I want to be? And ultimately where I wanted to take it and where the church wanted to take it were different. And so I thought, okay, I, I don't want to do that anymore. Had no idea what that meant. 
and uh, originally thought we were going to stay in Oregon and realized that's not going to work for a number of reasons. So we ended up moving back and really have spent the last two plus years reinventing myself okay. and pursuing things that I'm passionate about, things that also pay the bills. Uh, but just things that, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm almost 40. It's like, what do I want to spend my, my one life doing, you know? And I think you get to a point in your career, you're like, well, what's most meaningful. Yeah. And so got to the point where I was like, this was the, you know, all my experience, I've, you know, t- two decades in ministry, sure. multiple degrees in <laughs> church. You know, I, I still teach, uh, upcoming pastors, which is kind of funny to me because I'm literally teaching like the next generation, even though I don't work at a church anymore, mm-hmm. but I still speak at churches and do that. So, uh, it's and been, you travel around too. Like you are, I love it. yeah, I love traveling. I feel like traveling is one of those just resets just constantly because you get in the groove, get in a routine. And so, yeah, so I've, I've figured out so are ways you, are you to telling the same stories at the at different churches? Oh, like yeah. you're, you're just banking. Oh, it yeah. This is like, what these guys, this is what you don't realize. Like <laughs> the local church pastors have it the hardest. Cause like you use a story once you're done. And yeah, they, I mean, that's it. I've heard it. Tell a different story. And, you know, and oh, even, circle even, back. When they, even when they circle back like many months later or a couple of years later, you're like, OK, a lot of what I've heard. heard the diehards are like, I think oh, I've heard this before. Heard <laughs> this before. You know, it's <laughs> like, come on, it off the shelf. Yeah. But you travel that thing around and it's always new. And uh, yeah, I remember when fun. I that's when cool. I wrote my second book, I had a whole message designed around that. And that was mm-hmm. probably the one like I traveled all over doing that. I had that thing so dialed in. And what I realized is, you know, this is like stand up comics and stuff. They've got the material. They've already practiced it. You're the one that's never seen it. They know exactly yeah. where you're going to laugh, how are you going to react. Right. And that's that's a lot of fun. So now when I teach, I already know like. I've, I've done this thing four different times, you know? So do they react the same way? You know, like I've heard stand-up comics that they struggle in New York, you know, they're a little tougher. They, they don't. <laughs> the crowd's they a little tougher react. there. Even like you can be at a church and like, okay, the, there's an eight o'clock service, a 930 service, and then like, you know, a noon service or something. Even the same church. And like, I usually will ask like, hey, what's what's the service like? Like, tell me, because yeah. each service has its own identity. Because like, oh, this is the old people or this is the young family. You can families. totally tell sometimes on their face. <laughs> yes. oh, wait a minute, that didn't land like I was. Yeah. Well, the problem is you'll, you'll be like one message and you're like, oh, that joke just killed it. <laughs> you get to the next one and you're like telling the joke and then you're just like waiting for it and they're just staring at you and you're like, okay. Oh, so, you're, you're not laughing at that one. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So how, I mean, talk to us about how the transition has been for you to come back to for you guys for you and your wife for your kids i mean that that's got to be a difficult thing to navigate it, it was very difficult and you know we left uh this is a long story but we left a little bit heartbroken of you know what we had thought was going to be mm-hmm. didn't end up being that so you know again i think a lot of people can relate to things not sure. working out the way you wanted so okay, coming back my wife's in real estate she was doing it in oregon and in arizona and so uh had a lot more clients and, you know, foundation built here. So we're like, Hey, we can kind of resettle here. This is home for, for us. And just kind of figured out like, what are the next steps and started dreaming, you know, of like, Mm -hmm. okay, what do we want to do? And, you know, one of the, the interesting things that I do these days is something called communion wine co. And, uh, that's not like an income producing thing for me. That's more of like a passion project, but it came out of a conversation in that season where my wife, Michelle's like, what do you want to do? And like, I was, you know, I, was, I can be a little sarcastic at times. And I'm like, I don't know. I want to talk to people about Jesus. Uh, I want to drink really good wine. And, you know, I want to do something in, you know, the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. What is that? You know, I'm like living in Arizona, like <laughs> solve it, you know? Yeah. And she's like, I don't know. Let's figure that out. And then we started talking and, and then, you know, what if you gathered people together, like around wine experiences, but then like you talked mm-hmm. about Jesus. And so like basically brought the church into these settings that the church you doesn't normally yeah, find get it. to yeah. go to. And what if you kind of like mix those worlds and it became something called communion wine co, which was also, she came up with the name. She's very, Michelle, very good. Michelle is amazing. Yeah, Michelle, great. you're amazing. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll have links to this in our description and for uh, Jeremy's podcast, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, all that'll be down in the yeah. description. So, so that Thanks literally that. was like a loss to me of like, I found something I loved lost it and then figure out a way how do we you know reinvent Redeem that it. Yeah. yeah so then we we kind of figured out we can do local events here so we we found a wine bar in gilbert that we partner with and every couple of months we'll do an event there and then we do like weekend retreats where we'll take people on a whole weekend rent out a bed and breakfast in oregon and kind of walk them through a whole journey of mm-hmm. like hey where are you stuck you know you in your faith or where are you stuck with god and kind of like a mini deconstructing weekend of like figure out Everybody has 
something, you know, like, Hey, where, what's something you're working through right now? And to kind of help people work through it, mm -hmm. going back to Jesus, going back to some of these messages and metaphors that he said. And then literally, I mean, we're talking about like, Jesus says, John 15, I am the vine, you're the branches. And I'll be like, mm -hmm. look over there. Those are the vines, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like oh, cool. Like, I get it. You know, it's like some of this imagery, you're like, you, you can actually like bring it to life to people yeah. like, Hey, yeah. when Jesus did this, like, this is, this is what he was talking about. I'm like, let's talk about vines. And then we spend like that Saturday touring mm -hmm. different, you know, wineries, meeting winemakers, hearing about all of it. And it's been super cool. And, and so again, you know, we have a number of, of things that we're doing and some of them are just like, th like that just fills me. And so literally awesome. it's like, I don't need to make anything off of it. We just kind of re keep reinvesting That's that really in new cool. opportunities, but mm -hmm. I love to teach. And you guys we'll get to do this Jesus. together. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. Michelle, Michelle and I have totally different skill sets that we've figured out ways to like complement each other. And uh, so she's, mm -hmm. she's kind of the includer and she creates environments and spaces and thinks of things that I love to get up there and <laughs> talk on a microphone. And, <laughs> really? Yeah, it works. Really? And she doesn't want to do that. <laughs> Which surprises me. She's done it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, at, at our communion events, she normally doesn't want to, doesn't want to do it. So communion wine co and you got the swag. You get yeah, the, we got, we got swag. It's tremendous. It's, I, love I love wearing it. hats. Oh, so cool. I just had to like, I got to make some hats. So I, I can love wear it. All the time. That's great. That's really awesome. So how much of your, I, maybe I'm going backwards here a little bit, but when, when you were pastoring, so how much of your messaging was Michelle involved in? Did she help you craft your messaging or, or was that, Pretty much all you. So early on, um, and, and I'm obviously your wife and your kids are going to influence your message. Totally. Right. So, uh, early on, I would usually like, I'd write a message and I'd give her my notes and I, and what I would ask her like, Hey, what's the personal angle that you see that I can, you know, really do. And so mm -hmm. she would always find like, I'd figure out like, here's the theology, kind of the nuts and bolts of what I'm trying to teach. And then mm -hmm. she'd be like, Oh, you should tell this story of like, you know, this, and she would always kind of bring that real, like help me connect that uh when i got to be a lead pastor and it was like every week i'm preaching and then i'm doing other events it just yeah. got to be so much where it's like in the rhythm of i was cranking these out so fast that we didn't always have the time to sit down and okay hey, well you know idea so it got less as we went on just because sure. of the the frequency of like okay we we got so much going on yeah. um but she she uh and she knows this and i would tell her like when you're in the room i'm a better preacher i don't know what it is but literally, if I know she's in the room, it like brings it's a, out it's the a best comforting thing. thing. Hmm. It awesome. might. I don't it's know. I don't know. It's well, you guys something. really compliment each other. So you've got that going. But on, like but. she's she's the wind beneath my wings. I don't know. You know, it's like <laughs> she'd be in the room and I'm like that service, like put that one on the web because like that one's going to be better. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, why? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sure in the room. And maybe I'm like still trying to impress her like all these years later, but like I would just she could draw out the best of me. So she had huge influence. And then I'd always ask her like after we're like, hey, how'd that come across yeah. and, you know yeah. and it'd be funny people like i hope you don't get a big head you know doing this job i'm like you should meet my wife because <laughs> I, know. I don't know if you guys are enneagram fans we're both enneagram eights which means like we challenge no what that is. each other you gotta you gotta do it in the enneagram it's fascinating I'll have to check it out. uh i'm sure your listeners have have experience with this this is okay. a big thing um but eights don't normally go together the eight is the challenger and so interesting like we we took the test and we realized we both were eights which is huh. at first i literally got panicked like what have we done like this is bad <laughs> and I, was, I had to like read up on like do two eights kill each other at the end like what's the end of the story you know, like what happens here and it was like oh we're, we're okay we can figure it out you know and, and there's all, all these you know complimenting roles oh but um she's just incredibly honest with me and it's been the best thing for me because yeah. you know uh, sometimes when you're in that kind of a setting i think especially in a pastoral role you get undeserved uh praise from people like that was the greatest sermon I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, and you're like, wow, I am incredible at this, you know? And it's just like that lady says that to every single person right. who goes on the stage, you know? Yeah. But you get enough of that, it can go to your head. So you need those people who are like, keep you grounded. Yeah, that wasn't your best. You know, and I'm you, like, can, you can do better. Oh, here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Or like, yeah. yeah, that story was weird. Or like that illustration that you were trying to explain, like, it didn't make any sense. Like, oh, okay, cool. So that really helped me, you know, having that constant feedback. And yeah. she, I mean, 
it's not a secret. I'm 10 times better because of her in every area. And so, yeah, that's, that's how it's played out in ministry roles is she's usually awesome. the one that's like, she'll shoot me straight. Awesome. Yeah. And, and how are your kids doing with the, because one of the things we talked about at lunch that we really wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, raising kids in, in this world. And there's so many things that, that, um, that we have to deal with as parents and career transitions is, is one thing. And the kids are going through that and they're dealing with pandemics now and, and but even of, just the whole stuff. moving, you know, the relocating just the moving thing. part itself, yeah. you know, that's gotta be difficult. It, yeah, it was very difficult. Making friends and well, and they didn't, you know, there was a lot of complexities going on mm -hmm. around dad's job that they didn't understand. Sure. And I didn't understand fully, you know, so it's like, how do you even try to make sense to that? And so we yeah. tried to bring our kids into the conversation a little bit of like, hey, you know, we're kind of at a crossroads here. We're like, this is where the church wants to go. So where dad feels like, you know, he needs to go and mm -hmm. So we're going to, we're going to step away from this. And well, why, you know, we, we moved, cause again, we moved out to Oregon thinking like, I'm going to retire here. Like it was not a, it's just a stepping stone. You know, this was, was like forever. Man. This is, yeah, this is my okay. job. I want to change your do. phone number. I, mean, I did. I did. Yeah. I got a lot of three. Yeah. Oh, I love that 503 that? number. Nobody changes their phone number. You know, what's name, funny. You say that. <laughs> especially when you're from Arizona. I mean, it's almost like a. What is that called? Like if you cross well, no, the picket like, line, if somebody's on strike, my, my sister's a scab. A scab. He's a scab. Is what my it sister's is. moved out here from Southern California twenty years ago, and they're still eight oh five. Like they haven't, they're not letting go of the. Well, you know, everybody, no one remembers phone numbers anymore. You yeah. you just store them. So yeah, it unless is you see it come through as a five oh three, then you're like. But oh. that's what you got to realize that like I was all in. I mean, I yeah, was like, yeah. I'm I want to be here. I didn't want you know when people from our church would call me, I didn't oh, want them oh, to think sense. like yeah. who's this outsider. So yeah. it's like I was full. So now when they call, it. it's just like, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's nobody there. Like, Wait, did you keep the number? Oh, or maybe I missed it. that. Yeah, okay, no, okay, I've okay. kept it. Yeah, um, okay. Okay. So now I'm like, I'm not going back to an Arizona number. Okay. Because now this is like part of who I am. It's like yeah. my right. story. And it doesn't matter. Because it's like, like a no. scar. Like, exactly. Yeah. It's a 503 scar. Yeah. <laughs> so. But you know what's funny? I got text messages when I changed it. And literally people were like, oh, you're you're serious about this job. And I was like, cause of my number, like that's what convinced you. I moved my family across the country. That didn't convince you, but, but me was changing phone my yes, phone number, like, absolutely. oh, he's, he's all in. It really like is funny line. how, yeah. how that oh, yeah. communicates he's all something. In. He's all in. <laughs> Clearly. 503, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Got to drink the cooler. So anyways, back to that. Uh, <laughs> so it was really hard on our kids who didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. um, I thought naively, I think that coming back to home. And what's you know, the age range? So uh, youngest is seven. Oldest is 14. Okay. Five total. Okay. Two boys, a girl in the middle, and then two boys. So definitely tougher on the older kids, but all in an age range where a move can be traumatic. Where they're old enough to have friends. Yep. They have yep. relationships, you know, at their school. They had comfort zones. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really hard because it felt like to them, especially, you know, overnight, it's like everything changed. Yeah. And, you know, people who were friends with us were now kind of on the other line of like, hey, they don't support dad's decision. And, it, you know, it's like, well, why not? And it's like, again, we can't really explain all this to you other than just to like, this is the reality. And yep. it's like, you have to translate that, you know, to your mm -hmm. kids when the parents make a, a huge life decision. Yeah. And so honestly, we came back and it, it, it was a really tough season for our kids of just like not understanding. Like, we moved up there thinking it was going to be long term. We just mm -hmm. lost our friends. We just lost all these things that we loved. What gives? It doesn't make sense. And so a few of our kids, we actually got counseling for them to have like literally a professional to like on their level, talk it through. And and so I would say now they're way better. But uh, I would absolutely be lying if I said like, oh, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> like, you know, it was it was really tough and it was tough for our family. And well, it, has to, it has to be hard, especially on, I mean, also on you and Michelle, just seeing what your kids are going through. I mean, you guys selling houses, you, buying houses, selling, buying house. selling uh, houses, buying more houses. I mean, um, you know, you, you, you prayed on it you spent time thinking about it. You came to a conclusion. This is the best thing for our family. We, this is what we're going to do. And even you and Michelle are probably, you know, anxious about it and not sure what, you know, what it's going to look like back in Arizona necessarily. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, that would be, um, well, and on difficult that note, for you guys to then translate that. Well, I had to wrestle with that point of like, okay, I did feel like Jesus called me out there and right. it's like, exactly. okay, now I got a faith dilemma. Right. <laughs> like what, what gives either I misheard and I, and I, you know, Jesus didn't call me out there and that was just my bad. Uh, or Jesus did call me out there for this. 
and that's confusing or, you know, something. And I got to the conclusion where it's like, no, I think Jesus called me out there to experience what I experienced. To shape you some way. Yeah. And I think, you know, we have this notion in the American church of like, if God calls you to do something, it's going to be awesome and it's going to go well. And, and it's going to lead you to this. Pinnacle. And you're going to make more money and you'll be popular and people will love you. And it's like, I, I think God calls you to do stuff. It's like, this is going to break you. <laughs> and it's going to be the best thing for you. And I don't I mean that like in a sadistic way, but like yeah. God's like, this is actually going to be really good. Yeah. So I, I can look back now. You brought up scars. You know, the wounds have stopped bleeding <laughs> for a while. They're bleeding. So you poke on like, ah, oh, that hurts. It's bleeding. Yeah. Now it's like it doesn't hurt anymore. It's a scar. Now you can talk about it. I can talk about it. And I and it, it doesn't cause me pain. Mm -hmm. There's no emotional like, oh, and what I've realized is since then I have become truly a different person. And I I like this version of myself much better and it's because i just sat in that why didn't this work out this disillusionment yep. and you know yep. we didn't rush back into another church and i had you know opportunities people say hey you know why don't you start a church in oregon start a church here why don't you come you know i got literally people just offering me jobs out of the blue and it's like i appreciate all of that mm -hmm. But I, I like I've seen it. I've seen how the hot dogs made. It's not for me. Like I don't want to do it anymore. And there are people that I think are wired for it. I just realized uh, at the end of the day, what is in my head in that yeah. role is yeah. not what most churches are looking for. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, that's fine. Like, but I'm going to go pivot and do other things. Yeah. And that's what we've kind of figured out of like the community wine co stuff, some other stuff that's we're awesome. doing allows me to pivot, still be fully me. And then go to those spaces where now when I'm a guest speaker, I love it. I pop in, I deliver a message yep. and I'm out. I don't get emails. <laughs> I don't get, you know, nasty, get you like, I want to meet with you this week. Like, you don't know me. <laughs> I'm not your pastor. I'm just a guest speaker. And yeah. I, I like that. The guest yeah. speaker rolls nice. And so it's opened up. A lot of new doors have opened up since totally. you moved back. And yep. um, I want to talk about your podcast. Um Forest in the Trees. Yep, that, Forest yep, in the Trees. Yep. Um, I've listened to a couple of episodes. It's really entertaining. It's not just entertaining, but I mean, it's it's really cool, the conversations that you guys are having. And um, that's that started up after you moved back here, correct? That's only, yeah, recently. It's like yeah. the last probably oh, four right, months. Oh, right, right. Okay. Um, I had a friend of mine who used to work for me at one of these churches, and he was in graphic design and just one of the most creative people I've ever met. And uh, he has since gone freelance. And as he left the church environment, went to freelance, he realized, and this is a guy who grew up in, grew up in the church, you know, Christian since birth, you know, as, as long as he can remember, worked at a church, went to Bible college, all the deal. Mm -hmm. And after he goes freelance, gets out of that, he's like, I don't believe any of this anymore. Like, I, I don't, I just don't believe it. And not out of like, oh, he didn't know you know, he never really like, no, he knew like, he'd been in all the environments. He'd seen all the things and just came to a conclusion. Like, I don't, I don't buy it anymore. So he came to me, he and I had still been friends and he came to me and said, Hey, I got an idea for a podcast. And I've, you know, debated podcasts forever, but I was like, I don't know. You got, I gotta really find something I'm passionate about. Yeah. He's like, what if you and I read the Bible together and it's a pastor and a skeptic. And I just point out the reasons why I don't think this stuff makes sense. And you get to answer why you still believe it. And I was like, so intrigued by that. I'm like, let's do it. So we call it the forest and the trees. The idea being he brings out these trees of like, well, what about this? And what about this? You know, and these are not like, okay, like softball lob, like easy. These are like someone He's who hitting. knows his stuff, yeah. has read the Bible and yeah. is like, well, here's the issue with this. And they're legitimate, great questions. Mm -hmm. And then I try to bring us like, okay, with those trees in mind, can we see the bigger forest? Can we still make sense of faith in Jesus? Okay. And then I give my response and I, I've told him this, it's, it's so funny because like he'll ask me this really deep question and I will spend hours that week preparing a succinct theologically <laughs> profound answer. I'm like, all right, in five minutes, I'm going to answer this question. The best anyone has answered this. You know what I mean? And I'll, I mean, I will like cut, paste, copy. I'm like, we're fine it, massage it. Yeah, yeah. And then we get to the podcast and I'll give him my answer. And I'm like, what do you think? And almost every time he'd be like, yeah, that's a pretty good answer. You know, he's like, he's saying it almost like, good job. But like, I don't believe it, but like, good job. You know, and it's like, all right. So someday one of these answers land, but oh. I've really enjoyed it. So we did the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got all that's posted uh, as of now. Uh, we're going to start another book up. We're kind of asking our readers, like which book would they want to see next? And so we've got a few options there, but mm -hmm. yeah, we just do a chapter at a time. And he usually asks about five questions. I you know, started asking him some questions of like, Hey, how do you wrestle with this in your faith? And it's been, it's been wild. And what's been cool is 
it's created a safe space, whether you're a Christian and you've been a Christian your whole life right. and you're like, yeah, some of this is kind of weird. And, you know, I still believe, I just I don't know, you know, yeah. if you start reading the Bible, it gets complicated, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. That, that verse is kind of weird. And what is that saying? It gives that person space, but also gives someone space. Like, I don't believe this. I don't understand how people believe this. What's going on with it. And so we have that end of the spectrum is also like, I want to hear, I want to hear what these guys say about this. So it's been really cool. I mean, it's awesome because you guys come at it from this perspective of we love each other and we're, right. we're just, we're having this amazing conversation about, you know, how we see it differently. And, and I mean, I, the world can learn from that because, you know, we're, we're in this world where if you're, if you don't, if you don't adhere to my ideology or my yeah. theology or whatever, you're the enemy. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're evil. Yep. And, and you guys just come at it from this, we love each other, brotherly love kind of thing. And I think that's what makes it really cool. Well, thank you. It's, it's interesting when people, when we talk about the idea and they hadn't really heard a, b a bunch of it yet, they're like, Oh, are you guys debating each other? It's like, no, it's not a debate. It's just a conversation. And yeah. I'm not trying to win him over. He's not trying to win me over. It's truly two friends saying, let's have a meaningful conversation mm -hmm. where we acknowledge going in. We don't see the side eye. Right. We, there's not a surprise there. Like he's not going to land where I'm landing on this and, you know, vice versa. But we know that. And it's the relationship that allows us to let's have a meaningful conversation. And to your point, Brian, we need more of that. Mm -hmm. We need more to like, let's sit across the table and have a meaningful conversation, even when we know we're not going to land in the same space, but like, mm -hmm. do we not think we could learn from one another? Do we not think like the humanity of the person sitting across the room is worth honoring, you know? And, and I think we all could do with a bit more empathy to say, Hey, I don't agree with you, but I want to understand, mm -hmm. you know, where you're coming from. And so for me, it's, it's made me a better Christian <laughs> just to sit there and go, okay. And it has <laughs> sharpened me because I think in the church world, if all you do is surround yourself with Christians and you, you know, you hear the same mm -hmm. kind of preaching every week, you think everybody believes this. And why would anybody not believe this? Of mm -hmm. course, you know, like everybody here believes this. When you sit with someone who doesn't and you read the Bible with them and you let them point it out, you go, oh, not everybody believes this. Yeah. And there's a whole exactly. bunch of good reasons yeah. why. And they're making intellectual points. <laughs> right. And, yeah. And as yeah. I think people, he, I think he's more surprising people than I am because I think they caricature him as like, he's going to be this, you know, atheist. Like we, we literally get comments online of like, dude, just read the Bible and this would solve it. And he's like, <laughs> I've read it multiple times. Which part of it are you talking about? Like he's read it. Yeah. He, he knows. Yeah. He knows. But they're like, no, than... just read it. Like, yeah, did it. Which, which part are you talking about? Like I've read it all, you know? Yeah. And so he knows it and he's very educated and he still goes, yeah, I understand your answer. I don't agree with it or it doesn't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just try to make space for that, acknowledge it and go, there's a lot of people that relate with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Heck yeah. So you've tried lots of different things. So as you've come back. Yeah, I don't know if we covered it all. In I know. Like, he, did, did you mention author? that he's? A, I did. Yeah, okay. that's where I wanted to go. So you, we kind of briefly got on this topic earlier about how, you know, you people have let's say thoughts and ideas about doing things for a long time. You guys, you have actually done some of these things that people have thought about or dreamt about. Um, one of them being buying vacation rentals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of them writing books. I'm in the thought about it a long time. Camp I'm in that same. Yet. <laughs> I'm in Welcome that same. boys. The water's I'm, fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, you know, that we've thought about it too, buying vacation rental properties or writing a book. But you've actually done some of these things and, you know, some of the, I'm sure some of the people that are listening to this or watching this um, would have these same questions. Like, how do you take this idea from this concept in your head to now all of a sudden, you know, like in your case, you've got two different vacation rentals now in two different majorly different drastic <laughs> yeah. parts of the country. Yeah. So one in Arizona and one in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So how are you managing all of this and managing these properties in multiple states? So on one level, I think you look at, you know, this is kind of my joke about how, how on earth are you going to introduce me? Because you, you look at all these and you go, <laughs> I tried. I, what you know. is he like? Is he a pastor? Is he an entrepreneur? Is he like content creator? Like what, what is this? You know what I mean? Uh, stay at home dad. Like, you know, and depending on which role you look at, like no I could be a little bit of all of it. Um, but I think one of the things that we realized is I think a lot of people go into their job as a way of, I'm going to try to get meaning out of this and I'm going to try to, to pay all my bills and financially do what I want to do. And sometimes, or maybe even most of the time, it works like that for people where they find a job they love, they find meaning in it, everything's great. What I realized, you know, when, when I was as a lead pastor of, the only reason why 
I would continue in this role is because I would take care of my family doing this. I didn't want to do it anymore. And as I saw, you know, what it would require of me moving forward, it's like, I don't want to be that guy. So then I took a step back and it's like, okay, do I go back into ministry because I've got to provide for my family? Mm -hmm. Or do I figure out a way to provide for my family, do what we need to do, but then spend time on things I'm passionate about? So that's where I think the conversation gets interesting about like passive income and that depending on which circle you're in, either yep. is the the special sauce or it's like, you know, the, it's the, the evil of all evils, right? It's not real. I, I think it's worth talking about going, how do you financially take care of what you need to take care of and figure out how to do things you're passionate about? If you can do those in both, great. If you can't, you got to figure some things out. For us, what we realized is my wife's in real estate. She's an unbelievable realtor. Yes, I am very biased. I also <laughs> get to see the the, the product the that, she, yeah, that she's bringing this, home, yeah, the fruits. Yeah, yes, it's a lot of fruit. She does really, really good, and uh, she has you know carried our family in this season, which has allowed us to to do some of these things. And so we've realized, oh, like long term, what are ways that we can leverage some of our strengths and put us in a financial spot where then we can do things like Communion Wine Co, the podcast that mm -hmm. I don't I'm not bringing income off of those things. Mm -hmm. So we realize short term rentals. It's like. I can manage stuff. Uh, I can build, you know, all the systems on the back end. I can interact with people like that. And let me tell you, compared to running a church, running a short-term rental business is a walk in the park. I mean, like <laughs> the easiest thing ever, right? Like I don't get all the things I had to deal with. Don't yep. deal with it running this. So we ended up buying our first in Oregon, uh, Oregon wine country, a place we fell in love with. And we're like, look, that's a destination for a lot of people. It's also somewhere we want to be. So let's find some of these houses in places where we want to be. And so now, in addition to that being an income uh, asset for us, our family spends multiple months out of the year in Oregon wine country, and it doesn't cost us a thing that's awesome. to go and do that because other people that's pay for that. Thing. So that's yep. been incredible. And then we, uh, so that we actually bought that uh, a year ago um, at the end of the summer and then took us a few months. Uh, the city we're in has a lot of complicated hoops you have to, to jump through. Uh, in January was when we were able to launch it. So that's coming on a full year of launching that. And then this year, uh, again, we found another uh, rental in Pine that was already a rental. And we realized, hey, we could actually, I think, run that better than they had been running it. And so there saw some opportunity there, already had some of the work done to it. So we bought that and that one has just taken off the last couple of months. That's and great. We just spent last weekend as a family in that home. And again, other people are paying for that. So it's allowed us meaningful things as a family. We get to go travel, we get to get out of the routine. That's awesome. It makes it very You're closing me, Jeremy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Jay, in three yeah. easy steps, I can. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna like listen to the Carlson sheets. You said you, guys, you, said you, said you were gonna write a book on this, right? Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> this is this is uh, what I'm learning and realizing. It's yeah. not easy, and I don't want to make it sound like well anybody can do it. Yeah. yeah. You, you have to have resources. You have to have. There's a number of things you got to have in place. Uh, but it's one of those, and you know, I think I think a lot of people entertain the thought, and then it's just like that's probably too scary or too unknown, or it's a lot. Yeah. Or, or it's it is a lot. And again. The setup is doing. the hardest part because yeah. when, when you go from you got to buy a property, you got to get there, get you got to figure out all and then all the licensing, all the setup, that part is hard, especially the first time you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, creating the second one much easier than the first because I already was like, I've figured this out. The system and, and then now it's like number three, it's going to be great. Like I'm just getting better and better at it. And so I am going to figure out ways a uh, little forecasting of of figuring out how to help people navigate that up if this is something you're thinking about what are the preemptive steps you take to go okay how do i turn that from i would like mm -hmm. you know someday to hey we can make this a legitimate option that we could explore and i think i'm going to help you know try to walk people through some of the things that we've walked through because mm -hmm. it's been life-giving for our family and so now that's what I spend my time on. That is the, the biggest income, you know, producing part, but it's fun. And here's what I'll tell you is the, is the surprising fun part that most people don't talk about. So, you know, it's all automated to so the whole system, everything. So the only things I'm really engaging with people in is if there's a problem or if they have a question that's not already covered. But here's what Are there a lot of problems. No. So, you, yeah, you're managing. You don't have a management. No, company. So I do yeah. it. Yeah. I originally was going to hire and I had another friend of mine who has done this and he said, dude, you've got to do it yourself and literally swayed me. And I, it was one of the greatest things. And he took me under his wing and hmm. taught me uh, a bunch. He's also a realtor okay. uh, and, he, and he had figured this out and it was just incredible. And so he's the one that was like, no, you, you got to run it. So I run it myself, but here's what I've realized all these interactions with the people, they're planning out their vacation. 
They're in a great mood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like spend. people you know, like planning a you. Disney trip. Mm -hmm. Like you're usually yeah. in a good mood when you're thinking about that. Now, again, there's logistics of like this is expensive and all that. But like most of the time they're like, hey, uh, what's what's the coffee situation? You know, we're trying to bring <laughs> the right beans. You know, it's like that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, you guys are you're going to have fun. This is great. And one of the things that we offer at both of our rentals is we, we give them a voucher of how they can go get a local bottle of wine down the street from we have oh, cool. two different places. So then I get the receipts of whenever someone has cashed that in and it like literally brings me joy every time. Cause I'm like, Oh, they just, so cool. they just went and got a bottle of wine. They're having a great day. So cool. It's like vicariously, uh, yeah, I get yeah. to like celebrate these people who are like, they're having a great time. And most interactions like, Oh, we love this. This is incredible. This is so fun. And it's like, you get to vicariously but, but so live how do you, that. how do you deal with like, okay, something broke at the property yeah. and, and you're trying to manage that from a, from a distance. How do you, how do you do that? You then? have to have incredible teams. So okay. this is, so this is a huge of part of the system. So is, this is like boots on the ground. Yep. And you have, the to have, you have to have the okay. right people. And we spend a lot of time vetting, interviewing, figuring out, you know, so are these other agents then in the area that can help? So it depends. So we have quite the team in Oregon. It's run by uh, a realtor who, kind of wasn't like not i think the only like a full-time realtor she was doing a few things and so okay. she was cleaning houses kind of like as one of the side things she doesn't even clean the house anymore she started cleaning now she has other people that she hires out to do it but she just runs it for us and she's my point person and she's gotcha. incredible okay and so if something breaks or something you know she's the person solving it with me and so That's you awesome. have to have people on the ground okay. Okay. for sure because you know, unless it's down the street from you, you can't solve that problem. Quickly. Right. Right. So you have to rely on. So this has on. always been one of the things in my mind yeah. that I've always been kind of apprehensive about owning any kind of an out of state or out of area, you know, yeah. rental property. Yeah. But, and again, I don't want to minimize it. It is a challenge you have to solve. You have to figure it out, but it can be done. And once you get the right team, it's incredible. And so again, I, I, like one of the worst Problems. This is real talk. Okay. One of the worst <laughs> problems we've had recently uh, is uh, a, a cleaner. We had a, a one day in between two bookings. So they, they cleaned it. And then they went back the next day just to like bring some things to the house. And our cleaner noticed that the heat was, was off, like wasn't working. And it was like, 50 degrees no no it was, it was like 48 degrees in the house oh, or something. and this is this is Oregon in the yeah, winter yeah, yeah it's cold yeah and she's like oh no this is bad so so she contacts in the point person point person literally is texting me I'm at Disneyland okay have the time of my life a whole family's there and I get this text the, the house is at 48 degrees but here's what she texts with it I'm I'm on the phone I'm gonna get someone here as soon as I can just want to let you know now I had a check-in by the time she brought me in, I think I had a check-in later that day. So it's like the next day she's working on this. And so I'm literally thinking, okay, this, this could be bad, right? Mm -hmm. But we're going to solve this. So what I do is I just communicate to the guest, like, Hey, FYI, our cleaner popped in today, noticed sums up with the heat. Just want to make you aware of it. it. Might be a little chilly when you get there, but I want to just assure you we're on it. We're going to get someone over there as soon as we can. We're going to, we're going to solve this for you. Just want to give you a heads up. Okay. So I'm mm -hmm. going to over communicate because I don't want that guest popping in going, yep. what on earth? Right. Yeah. So they know before they even check in, there's a problem. They're solving the problem. Yep. My, my, the lady on the ground, the realtor that's managing this, she ends up calling multiple people, find someone who's in, down the street. That person comes out, figures it out, fixes it before they even get there. Problem solved. Perfect. Like awesome. she was incredible. That's amazing. And yeah. so we literally like send her a gift basket. Thank you so much for your help. But like, that's the worst that I've had in a while. And so again, things do go wrong. If you have a team there who's competent mm -hmm. and they're able to like, Hey, we can solve this. Most of it's not insurmountable. And most of the time guests are pretty accommodating yeah. of like, yeah. Hey, we understand it's a house and stuff's going to happen. Things, happen. Yeah. Yeah. things are going to break, yeah. whatever. And most of the time, how you solve the problem speaks more to them than mm -hmm. the problem itself. Like uh, oftentimes I win people over when something goes wrong. Like one time we ran out of coffee filters. Now we didn't do anything wrong. We had coffee filters in the house. They just ran out like, yeah, and yeah. they didn't stock enough. So the, the guest literally just reached out and said, Hey, FYI, there's no more coffee filters. Now as a host, I can figure out, all right, what's my reaction there. I'm like, I'm going to win this person over mm -hmm. with this conversation. So I get on Instacart. I get a whole like hundred or something of coffee filters sent rush delivery to, you know, to my house. It's like, 40, 50 bucks or something to do all that. What do yeah. you think? Like, that's expensive coffee filters. It's not about the coffee filters. It's no, about no. this guest. Yep. I'm going to yep. wow this how guest. how they feel. Yep. And literally within the hour, 
they get a notification like on the door, there's coffee filters and there's like this hundred pack of coffee filters. And literally the guest is like, I can't believe you got me coffee filters like 20 minutes later. And in the review, I get a five star review in the review. She talks about this problem. The, 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 we ran out of coffee filters. I let the owner know <laughs> 20 minutes later, a hundred <laughs> coffee filters on the front door. Like it That's wowed awesome. her. Yeah. And so again, even those, if you have the right mentality is a chance to, to make a customer for life. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, even the problems, even the worst things that could go wrong are opportunities. If you have, it sounds right like you mentality. had some Disney training, perhaps. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it sounds I, yeah, like I was it. in the happiest place. No, I wasn't at Disney for that one. I was, I was like, well, we need to send his, his customers a thousand in a, coffee filters. His customers in a happy place and he wants to keep Correct. it that way. Right. Yeah. yeah and again, you amazing. know, you, you can either make it a really big deal to someone and then their reaction is going to downplay it. Like, oh, I, I didn't, I didn't need a that. Yeah. Or I, downplay it and then invites them to make it really yeah. you know uh, yeah. i gave you one thing and you couldn't even get me coffee filled. you know then you know you hype them up so to me i'm like mm -hmm. i'm gonna make this the biggest deal in the world you know and yeah. if they ever point something out i'll usually be like these are the worst cleaners in the world i cannot believe they allow that you know and it's like it's not that big a deal they know it's not that big a deal yeah. but if you make it a big deal you just kind of allow them to relax of like oh they're, they're honoring us they're here they're going to take care of it yeah. they're going whatever it is yeah that's great. so even even the worst case you can you can dream up it's it's a chance to win heck yeah that's great does that translate over to your TikTok, where you have these viral videos now that have lots of people commenting on them who <laughs> i don't know if that's the same thing <laughs> So tell us we, we harder, Jay and I Brian. have recently experienced this. We, we've, we've got the Jay and Brian show on TikTok. Uh, check it out, everybody. Um, and we put up our first um, short video. It's a three-minute clip with uh, Jimmy Reynolds, who was on our show, uh, previous, pre I almost said previous customer, previous, previous guest. Previous guest. And uh, it was a great three-minute clip. I think you saw it. Yeah, and really good. We've, we've got like 22,000 people have watched it, and there's a bunch of comments, and some of them are like, like, yeah, it's not actually Moises Alou. I think it's his son. And, and this guy's not a good storyteller and this and that. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm just like, and I'm like, hey, thanks for watching. Exactly, really appreciate yeah. you. Thanks for the feedback, everybody. We really appreciate that. Thanks for that. the view count. <laughs> yeah. But you've got a couple of like a couple hundred thousand views and like all kinds of comments, right? Like, so that's what's funny that about. So it? he's like, Jeremy's TikTok famous now because he's got. Is, that, kid, is that what you call the, it? The kid in the car seat. He's like the kid in the car seat <laughs> celebrity on TikTok. As seen on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So maybe that's how I should have introduced you. Yeah, I'm a TikTok did celebrity. Cover, so he's basically TikTok, TikTok famous. Did we cover TikTok famous in the intro? I no, know. I, that's why I you, failed. You know I what? Start this whole thing over. <laughs> Just go back. Yeah. I need I need that. That's so we got me. Jeremy Jordan in today. <laughs> famous TikTok. You may have seen him on TikTok. <laughs> So what's Real funny is you know, a lot of us, you know, who are content creators, I put you guys in that category, anybody that's trying to Thank offer you. value, encouragement to others, which that feels I, really good coming from yeah, you, Jeremy. I appreciate just that. Just soak that in, Brian. Just wear that. <laughs> yeah, like a, I'm going to waller in it. Coming in. <laughs> like a warm <laughs> blanket. Uh, yeah. So anybody, you guys are trying to add value. I yeah. appreciate that. That's why I love these conversations. I'm trying to add value to people that I can, right? Like, how do I encourage you? How do I inspire you? How do I give you things that I've learned that maybe you're trying to learn, right? You know, like that's yeah. what makes all of this better. But the irony is when you create something that gets big, you're going to get people who have no context for who you are mm. and you get way more of that. And so, and you know, you're going to be judged. Oh yeah. So my, my claim to fame, I got to set this up a little bit because it's a little bizarre. <laughs> I, you know, I, I make things like, I think my TikTok says, you know, like things I talk about, like wine, uh, theology, parenting, and marriage. Like those are like the four that I say cool. like, Hey, kind of like umbrellas. Like if you follow this account, those are probably That's the topics gonna I'm going to get the most of, you know, so people kind of get that, you know, parenting being one of them. So this is months ago, but the other day I was like, uh, we had taken a quick drive and our eight year old is just like conked out in the van. And I, I thought it was so funny. Like this is such a short drive and the dude was passed out hard. And so I just made this real quick video where it's like, I'm like unloading everything in the van, the side doors open and he's just still in there just zonked, you know? And so I just recorded it. I'm like, Hey, you know, when that, when that afternoon drive hits hard or something, you know, some real funny thing. Well, he's eight and he's little and he's in a booster seat. And so I post this video thinking like people are going to just laugh about like, oh, I've had my kids fall asleep too. Well, this like video gets a lot of views and people start dogging on me. 
Like, <laughs> why is that kid in a car seat? Like, th- well, you got a grown man in the back seat. I mean, all these like really sarcastic, like that kid should be driving and he's in a booster, you know? And I'm like, what? And I'm like, he's eight and he's tiny, you know? So I go back and I watch. It was like one of those like optical illusions where like, okay, kind of from the angle that it looked like, okay. maybe he looked a little like longer than he is, you know what I mean? Like, okay. But I'm like, so then I start wondering like, Am, am I a bad parent? Like, should he not be in a booster? So it like makes you second guess yourself. So, so I you research that. So I research it. I go on like Arizona booster laws, you know, like what's the regulation? And I find out for his height, for his weight, he absolutely should be in a booster. Like they're like, yes, like keep this kid in the booster for, for his actual age. So I go on and I'm like, I'm going to do a follow up video. It was like one of the first times I'd responded to a comment on TikTok. you know, like you can do a video reply. So that's how you do it was a video reply. Yes. Yeah, so okay. You might, you might want to do this. You get, get your hater next time. Okay. Just do a video reply to him. I'm taking mental notes right okay, now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is a secret. <laughs> so I do a video reply to one of these comments of like, that, that kid's 15 and he's in a booster or whatever, you know? And so I like respond and it's just me talking. It's just me in my office, sitting in my chair, like, Hey, I posted this video. Some of you are all hating on me. Like, uh, so I second guess myself. I looked it up. Turns out, you know, moral story. He's supposed to be in a booster. He's a, you know, he's this size or whatever. And then I just, at the end, I was trying to offer encouragement. So I'm like, Hey, if you're a parent, like just shout out to you. Like this whole thing's hard. Like, I literally thought I was posting a video that parents would relate to ended up getting ostracized because my kid, you know, have to look it up, have to do all this. I just, it's hard. Parenting's hard and leave it at that. I wake up the next day and it's like 50,000 views. And I'm like, I'm, I'm confused. Like me defending myself about the booster (laughs) and it just starts like taking off. And then like a couple hours later, hundred thousand views, then like 200,000, 300,000. 400, it's like over 600,000 some wow. views. That's a lot of people. That's like I've cool. never, I, as a professional communicator, a my entire life have never ever created anything or said anything that that many people have seen and heard in my life. Never. And now I'm the car, car <laughs> booster dad. So right? instead of a couple thousand people as you're preaching, you now have 600,000 people watching a, that are yeah. going to give you their feedback about which a is, defense video. <laughs> which is bizarre, his kid right? in a booster seat. And so you're like, thank you. And again, what, what's funny is uh, now I'm, you know, most of these people don't have any idea who I am. Like I don't, right. I don't right. have that many followers on anything. Right. So like, these are people who thank you. TikTok talk algorithm, like somehow <laughs> ended up there. And you know, what's funny is I got all these parents coming to my aid. Like you keep that kid in a booster till he's 20. And you're like, you're doing the right thing, dad. Like don't let them hate on you. And then I got people like, really you're letting TikTokers, you know, control your parenting, like get a life. So then I got like new <laughs> kinds of hate. I mean, like, and then people going back to, no, he looks six feet tall. Like, you know, like it's like that. And it's like, Wow. And so I tried to like comment, you know, and reply. And then it literally got to a point where I'm like, I, I, this is not my full-time job to just reply on this thread anymore. Like I can't keep up. And they were all, you know, one of those kind of categories. So I just kind of let it go. But what was the funniest is that literally people who I haven't, like I've lost contact with over the years, found me randomly through that, watched that video and went, I know that guy. And then like reached out to me. He said, dude, I saw you on TikTok. See what I mean? I haven't talked to you in years. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You saw the TikTok, but it's like, yeah. So guys, I'm TikTok famous. I'm TikTok famous. TikTok famous. famous. I feel some some reply videos coming. Not just for the Jane Bryan show, but we have a couple up on the My City Lender page as well. And there's just some weirdos out there. And sometimes <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta go for it. You just know? roll with it. The people want it. Yeah. And my wife just recently had her viral moment. We we did a video together, and she made the comment like, "Yeah, I think most you know families, you know, when they do uh, stockings, the the wife probably doesn't get anything in her stocking because I think the wife buys the stockings." And I said, "Yeah, it's mm-hmm. probably true." But I said, "I bet you most families don't do stockings." She's like, "Oh, for sure, people do stockings." I'm we like, just talk. I'm like, I, "I bet you not that many people do stockings." So she's like, "All right, let's put it to a poll." So we do a video. It's just us discussing our debate on stockings. <laughs> so she, yeah, on stockings. So she's like explaining, <laughs> and then I'm like, "I don't think that many people do stockings." And then she's like, "All right, what do you think?" 
I think she's up to like 400,000 views on that. Oh my gosh. Like, what? <laughs> what? TikTok again? TikTok famous again. TikTok famous. This that's, is like that's, a TikTok. Jeremy, that's the world we're in. Ooh, they're talking about stockings. But here's what's bizarre. <laughs> stop to on anyone <laughs> on TikTok or making any kind of content, you have no idea. What's going like, to stick The stuff to. that I'm like most proud of, of like, this is literally brilliant content. This is so heavy. This is cool. People are like, yeah, it's all right. Like, no, no, no. Just, no, you don't understand. Like that, I just, like, I just dropped gold on you today. Like, yeah, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> me talking about a booster seat. I need more of this guy. See, this you, is, you, this is what I'm here you've for. You got me disappointed sitting here that we only have 22,000 views with, for our Jim Reynolds clip. And I'm like, the guy was amazing. He's an MLB umpire, crew chief, world like, series. Who doesn't like, want to hear that? Like, who wouldn't no, want to hear from this It won't guy? be that content. Who wouldn't want to hear a story about content. ejecting Barry Bonds? That was awesome. <laughs> and telling him he wasn't very good. Yeah. It's the stuff that you just, you don't, you don't know, which is why I think you just go, you know what? Make a lot of content, make mm -hmm. the stuff you care about. And when and you, make a bunch of other stuff that is off the wall. Just and be you out. though. But like and part of that out. is just like, that's Michelle and I in our marriage. Like that was that. That's me as a dad. That was that. It's like, just be a person, be you. And like, let it, let the chips fall where they may, I guess. Now, one of your kids is a budding YouTuber also. I don't know. Yeah, if you my 14 year old. Yeah. And it sounds like that's so, coming along. So it's. Parenting wise, he wants all the social medias. I'm not comfortable with that. I mm -hmm. did student ministries for many years. I'm like, I've seen where that goes. So I'm like, all right, tell you what, we will give you a YouTube channel. We get one thing. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see how you manage this. And, you know, that allows them to see YouTube videos, but also like you could post content you want. But and you can go in a community there too, right? With YouTube. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. YouTube well, community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, he, you know, he gets this and he starts diving into it. Well, he starts like really loving making videos like and as a dad like i've not seen the drive that he has shown for youtube i've not seen that in him in anything huh. so like he, he played baseball for years has never applied himself to baseball <laughs> like he has applied himself as a youtube content creator hmm. but what is crazy is so he's like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna work on content every day i'm gonna try to build subscribers and i'm like yeah dude it's hard yeah, you know, like it's just hard. no, it's hard. Like you know, don't get your hopes up. And then like he's like, Dad, uh, I'm almost at a hundred subscribers. You want to celebrate with me? I'm like, you have a hundred subscribers? Already? Like that's really good. I'm like yeah, let's do let's do a video. What do you want to do? And he's like, let's do a talkie challenge video. We do different hot sauce when we talkies. And I'm like, okay, yeah. you still want to do a video <laughs> with your dad? Like cool, I'm gonna honor so, that. Like sweet. there'll be a day where it's like, Dad, get on my videos. Yeah, but he wanted it. So like we celebrated a hundred subscribers to his channel, and you know it's super cute. I let him do the talking, and then I'm just eating talkies. <laughs> well then like, I don't know, a, a month or less later, he's like, Dad, it's got 200 subscribers. I'm like wow, that was that's pretty fast. We're in the car this week and uh, get, get, getting fast food or something. He's like, Dad, I just hit four fifty. I'm like subscribers. He's like, Yeah. I'm like, How are you doing this? Like you are speeding this up. And literally, what I've realized, like he just he's found something he loves. He creates, mm -hmm. I think, posts like a video a day, and it, and it's like kid video content mm -hmm. that I'm not interested in. <laughs> you guys probably wouldn't be interested in, but like. You know, there, there are 14 year olds on tick or uh, YouTube that love, you know, his material. And they're like, they're really into this. And he just is working at it. He keeps building this following. And he already has like teaching me of like that. If I hit this many hours of views and I have this many followers, then I can start making money. And the other day, like, Hey, uh, when I get paid, it's going to have to go to you till I'm like 18. <laughs> I'm like, you have already like mapped this out, that all out of like how you're doing this. And I was realizing like, he's going to graduate and he may have thousands by that point, right? Of like YouTube subscribers. Yeah. Like the career options that that allows you to do is truly remarkable. And so it's interesting. I think as parents, we often need to like get off the screen. It's too much. Yeah. We're, we're going to hear about that but in the comments. There really is a new reality emerging where, and again, I think you have to find a balance. But he's he's got passion for it. He's, he's got passion. He's and really this could legitimately yeah. tap into something. Yeah. And when you find out something that your kid, like my kid loves yeah. that, you're like, yeah. Okay, how do I Pour fan this. that flame? Yeah. And like, yeah. how do and I? He's only going to get better with time. He is so it's like, dramatically you know, getting better. He's doing it now. Totally. Can you imagine how good he's going to be if he wants to keep doing it when he's twenty? Right. Like, I mean, and yeah. he's teaching me about YouTube all the time. And he, Dad, you, you got to do it this way, and you know, you got to use your shorts like this. And it's like, oh yeah, use this hashtag. And it's like, this kid's going to be incredible, and he's fourteen. And so it is really, it's been a really eye opening and he's watching, you know, uh, both of his parents use social media. And again, you know, he's, he's hyped when, you know, we get those TikTok videos and, you know, that was the sure. for him too. Yeah. So I think he's seen like, oh, it's possible to, to go really big, but mm -hmm. for him to already experience at 14, it's like, I didn't have any of that when I was 14, you know, like that didn't exist 
for us, but new avenues are opening up. And again, there's so many ways our kids could leverage this, mm -hmm. you know, even in their career, it's like, well, if you <laughs> go get hired for a job and you say, oh, also I've got a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers, most jobs would be like, cool, why don't okay. you make content Neat. about that? Or like, yeah. if you want to write a book, they're going to ask, hey, what's your yeah. social media account look like? Oh, I got 100,000 100, subscribers. Okay, okay, here's here's the contract. So it's like yeah. he's opening doors mm -hmm. for himself or he's setting himself up for that. I think it's pretty rad, but it's it's definitely a little... It's a little bizarre to think about. And everybody, I think it, when they're just getting started with any of this stuff, you know, there's a lot of apprehension because it's just, there's this fear of just starting. Yeah. There's the fear of the camera, the fear of the, the, whatever it is, you know, where it might go, how you look, how you feel. And it's like overcoming that, overcoming all those things. And he's already doing that at 14. It's pretty incredible. Well, I think it's harder for us as adults. Oh, it's worse. Because I'm, but, I'm a professional. You know, you guys, yeah. we, we yeah. run a legitimate yeah. business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, we're a professional. Let's do a podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's a moment there where it's like, you gotta be willing to look a little silly or not know what you're doing. Right. And I think adults, that's hard for it. kids. Don't have that. Like, that's, true. Like, that's true. Well, we, we, I'm in junior high every day. I feel this might as well try it online. We, we have the added bonus of no, nobody wants to hear about mortgage, Jeremy. They just did. So we're, you know, cool. Let's, let's, let's do a podcast. That's, not about mortgage. We're, we're having <laughs> mortgage cool conversations. Has to be cool. So our idea was, let's just cool? have cool conversations with cool people yeah. and, and see where it goes and just have fun with it and build a YouTube channel. Why not? There we are. You know? More engaging the mortgages. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> way more. <laughs> a lot more. Yeah, way more. Yeah. But, uh, yeah my 15-year-old, 15, 15 I mentioned at lunch, he wants to be pilot. Um, he, he's asked me to start a YouTube channel, help him start a YouTube channel where he's just he's just doing flights. flights. Yeah. Like... Super easy. And I, I, I've put it off and I put it off because I was like, well, I got all this other stuff going on. But but he's like interested. He keeps talking to me about it. And maybe I need to dive into that with him. There's something. I, know, I, I have the know-how. Well, there's fine. something weird about, I think, you know, when you see your kids with the opportunity you didn't have, you know, it's it, like, well, it, it, can't, it can't work us. like that. Because it's like you default to that. Well, it's right? like, like, well, it's, well no, whoa. My, my fear is like, I mean, I and, and I as I'm becoming a YouTuber myself, I'm starting to realize, recognize the possibilities here. But, you know, for your kid, you st in our generation, I think maybe one of the, you know, we, we're, you have to have a career. You've got to go to school. You got to right. build a, you know, YouTuber. You want to yeah, be a YouTuber? It go through your mind. You know? Like, that's not fair. A hundred percent. Like, that isn't fair. I had to do all this other stuff. Yeah, well, from, okay, so, man, that's not fair. I didn't, I didn't, this wasn't a thing when I was a kid. Right. I could have capitalized on it, you know, and, but wait a minute. No, we're only in our 40s. We can still do this. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, like, for me, <laughs> it's not too late. Yeah. So, one of the other things, I wouldn't even mention this. I'm also a college professor adjunct. So, I teach, oh, okay. I, I teach ministry classes. Oh, I think I referenced a little quickly. I teach Jeez. some ministry classes online. Uh, so, I, I like the collegiate setting. I like, you know, teaching and all that. So, with that. What don't you do? Yeah, it, it's a few things. <laughs> with that, though. My, my kids will be like, dad, should we go to college? And I'm like, probably not. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I, I would, I would really make sure that your career needs it. It's a very specific and skill. And these days it's less and less that you need yeah. it. And so like even my wife, Michelle, mm -hmm. she went to college, got a business degree at ASU, great degree, but she doesn't need it for real estate, you know? And so was it wasted? I don't know. It's a lot of money, you know, a lot of time. And it's like, literally I'm looking at him going, okay, if, if he has some, you know, cranking by the time he's 18, would I really recommend he go spend four years, bury himself in debt to get some, you know, certificate that for most of the jobs he may be interested in, he doesn't need. And that's what I, I think is interesting, you know, and even now with YouTube available, you can learn anything you want. Right. I mean, anything you want. It, it's yeah. truly remarkable. Yeah. I, I've been teaching myself a new software lately, watching YouTube videos. I learned how to sweat pipe. There you, you go. Watch anything. YouTube videos. I mean, anything you want. So even the idea of I'm going to go get formally trained, unless you need a credential, I don't know how valuable it's going to be. And again, I say this as a guy who has a master's degree I, and I had to have that for right. some of the things that I've been doing. So there is benefit there, but now it's like, it's a piece of paper. Would I mean, you do it again? I think I would just because for the things that I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I, I, it helped you, me you, directly. Yeah, you had to. Have. And, you know, for me to teach now, I have to have a master's degree. True. So yeah. I, I couldn't be an, a regular adjunct mm -hmm. like I am without that. Like that was one right. of the, like, right. hey, you have to prove that you have a master's degree and send it to us and then you can be eligible. Mm -hmm. So it's opened that door, which I really like doing. Um, but literally for my kids, I'm like, unless, 
you you tell me some profession that absolutely requires it i'm probably gonna push you the other way to go 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 launch your career go spend your time and like because i mean you bury yourself in debt to your eyeballs mm-hmm. and then he'll mm-hmm. spend the next 10 20 years trying to get out of it yeah and if you don't need it and again i, I say this as someone who i work at a college and i like it <laughs> but i just also recognize it, you know depending on what you want to do i just think that's part of the conversation that i think is different when we were growing up it's like if you wanted to make something of yourself you, you went to college, to to college. You, you know yeah. and i remember people telling me don't drop out go all the way you don't want to you know yeah. get a crappy job it's like okay i'm gonna go to college and now i'm like i don't know <laughs> and for the stuff i'm doing today you know aside from the adjunct teaching i don't need my degree on any of it <laughs> that's just the reality well there it is managing folks. short-term rentals don't need a degree for it community wine co don't need a degree for it podcasting don't need a degree for it so that's the yeah. irony it's like i've used my degree for decades so yeah. thank you degree all, all of that you did for me <laughs> but now it's like i've pivoted and you know and so i think my kids are realizing that too it's like okay well and, what are we gonna do and if you know i love like if one or two of my kids wanted to like join us like as we're you know adding rental mm-hmm. properties and i'm gonna need help managing that i'd love to be able to say to one of my kids like hey you're running this end of this business and it's a legitimate job and you're this is a little family yeah. business we yeah. got going i wouldn't need to send them to college for that i'll teach you <laughs> i'll show you how to do it and so i don't know it's just it's it is you know, in a weird way different. that's like going back in time when when kids would come learn up and they would learn a trade yeah. they would they would go out and and be with their parents as they're doing their doing their their trade and learn it and come up in that business i mean that went away a long time ago industrial revolution but yep, we don't need yep, to go yep. there but you your know. dad made shoes you learned how to make shoes right, right. Exactly. Totally. exactly so in a weird way that's full circle like, yeah. brian i like that mm-hmm. I'm, have to, I'm up to think I, on I, that I, a little I, bit i have moments sometimes you do <laughs> make you that do. a youtube short right there that's a short right there <laughs> So what's next for you? Is there anything, is there a next at this point? There probably is a next. Maybe you don't know it yet. Maybe God hasn't put it on your heart yet. I think what's fun is trying to just to be present and then, you know, be available to whatever the options are. So, so Michelle and I have just been able to have conversations of like, okay, we're in a season right now where our kids are young and, you know, we got four more years till our oldest is, you know, maybe onto something else. And, you know, uh, a little bit more, you know, 10, 11 years with the little guy. Mm-hmm. So, okay, we have this season, but also like, we don't want to delay things that people go, oh, someday. You guys want to do. We want to do. So yeah. one of those for us was we realized, okay, we saw like, what are the things that people want to do and they don't do because of kids or season? One of them is world travel. Most people talk Definitely. about, I want to travel the Definitely. world. And when do they do it? You know, when, when they are, are, are old. I read a book this year, which I don't know if you guys do book plugs. I read yeah, a book. Go for Let's it. Do it. Blew me away. Like forever changed our family. Uh, the book is called Die with Zero. Okay. Okay. The whole premise is uh, we we think someday I'm gonna keep building, saving, you know, doing all this. Someday all this is gonna pay off. Mm-hmm. And you miss the moment you have right now. And you know, especially as believers, we have to acknowledge we're not guaranteed anything. Like Jesus doesn't guarantee tomorrow. It's pretty clear, right? So you have today, make the most of it. Well, what we realize as we read this, we're like, yeah, we, we will have more discretionary income when our kids are gone mm-hmm. and our careers, you know, just we've had all that time. Sure. But we won't have our health the way we have it right now. We won't have our energy. We won't have, you know, and we won't have all that time for those experiences to shape us. Mm-hmm. So we just decided, let's figure out a way to make it work. So this last year, Michelle and I decided, let's go to France. I don't know if you know they they make wine in France. I heard I've heard of that. It's uh, I heard it's that. not bad, guys. It's not bad. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, so that was. So a did place, you actually go to the Bordeaux region? Uh, we did a Bordeaux river cruise. Oh my gosh! Let me tell you, it's as good as they say. <laughs> but it was like everything because, like you know, we did three days in Paris afterward. Mm-hmm. My wife is like obsessed, wanted to see Paris, and so I'm like, okay, we get this river cruise. I get all these wineries, like where it's made. We get you know all these experiences in all these towns. We get Paris, all this unbelievable like 10 day 11 day trip and we decided it's going to be hard financially be tight kids all of it it's yeah. going to be hard and we're just going to figure it out yep. and so we just figured it out and we did it at the like right after school started so the kids were back in school which made it easier on family to, to mm-hmm. watch them mm-hmm. and we had all oh, i thought you were just going to leave them all 
Like, we'll leave them all with Gavin. <laughs> yeah, yes. every... Gavin, you're up. <laughs> yep. YouTube That's it. Your you'll, watch. you'll be First famous watch. for it. That's it. Time to become a man. Yeah. Just take some videos. <laughs> <laughs> just film the whole thing. <laughs> just and, to, and we'll cut it out. If you can't figure out something, just go to YouTube. There's probably somebody to tell you <laughs> how, how to watch a kid. Yeah. How do I babysit YouTube? <laughs> So we do this trip and it was like everything we wanted it to be. And what was so interesting, and this should come as no surprise, we get on this river cruise and guess the average age oh, of everybody. 65. Oh, plus. And so there's literally us and people are looking, here's what's funny. People are looking for our like parents. like our honeymoon. Our honeymoon. No, people are looking for our parents. Like, who are they with? Because like their parents have to be here. Like, oh, they must no be No one YouTubers. assumed. YouTubers. Are they content creators? I think Are I feel like I have TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should, are you, I are you the, are you are the you booster that seed dad? I, I've seen yeah, I got asked that, that all the time. No. <laughs> but there was one other couple in their 40s, one other couple in their 50s, and that was it. And then everybody else was 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, literally. And so we realized we'd be on these excursions doing these things. We're walking laps around these, these people because they're old. And I don't mean that to knock them, but like they don't have the energy. They don't have their health. And this is the time that they could go do it. Yeah. And we just realized like we have our energy, like we can bounce back, like we can, you know, do these things. And it was incredible. And now who I am today has that experience as an investment in who I am and, you know, what I've seen in the world. And that's made me who I am. And we just realized like we're not going to wait on some of these things, you know, like someday I'll, yeah. we're going to figure those out. So yeah. I think we've really taken that idea and it came from this book, Die With Zero, but like, we're going to do the things that are meaningful to us now. We're going to figure it out. And the problem is when you try to do this, everyone tries to bring you back down to reality. Yeah. Like, yeah. but your kids are so young. Don't you feel bad? And man, do you feel bad about spending that much money? It's like everybody, and it, they're not bad intentions, but you just realize like, it doesn't make sense. Like that's not when you go do a, France cruise, like you're, you're too young, you know? Yeah. And even on the cruise, the couple that were in their forties and the couple in their fifties, both had no kids. So no. the two other youngest <laughs> yeah. couples. Okay. So then they look at us and yeah. everyone assumed you have you no, no kids. kids. And we'd be like, no, we have or five. And they would literally laugh. You do not have five. Yeah, we have five. Uh -huh. Where are they? <laughs> at home with grandma? <laughs> like what? You, I mean, cause it just made no sense. Yeah. And we're like, okay, this we've, we've stumbled into something here. Like this is incredible. And so that's our thing now is like, we're going to try to do one like world, you know, trip a year. And so we're already I in, they have these, um, what are they called? The Christmas markets in Europe. I don't know if you guys have seen these. Mm -hmm. Like it's like Christmas on steroids, like literally yeah. all these little European towns. And Ooh. so that's the next one we're eyeing for, for 2023 is these Christmas markets. And so we're figuring out, all right, that's like in December, you know, November, December yeah. time. We're figuring out going to go do that. And that's been one of those things like that is huge for us. It's awesome. We're able to figure it out. So how we do things like that, you yeah, know, that's you know awesome. every year we're going to try to add a rental home. So we're looking at Oregon coast is our next one. We're going to try to pull off, but, uh, we hold that a little bit loosely because pine Arizona wasn't our second. Okay. <laughs> so we kind of just found just that one. And yeah. here we go. The problem is when your wife's in real estate and she sees houses, oh, all she's like, Hey, he's come up. Yeah. We need to look at one. this. And I'm like, okay, so I wasn't looking for us. I was looking for a client, but. And you said that, it was rented 28 days this month or something. Yeah. Like bonkers. Yeah. I mean, like just slaying and this is the slow season in pine slaying Crazy. pine so we're literally we went up there this last weekend and you know we're asking like all the restaurants like hey is, is this really busy right now and they're like no hang in there this is the slow time i'm like no no no, no you don't understand <laughs> we've got 28 <laughs> you guys have days food to, pee, to feed all these yeah people. Like, like i don't understand what's going on and so it's been so fun and so like just every year it's our goal and not whether or not we'll pull it off but that's you know just keep yeah. building that and and just again, about books. Are you writing any more books? So I've got uh, <laughs> actually one of the people that reads my blog um, is a, an executive editor for a giant publisher. And, and I loved oh, your first cool. book, by the way. Thank you. What, Redeeming Pleasure. That was my second book. Second book. Never mind. Uh, yeah. So second. Thanks book. a lot for dogging yeah. on the first book. Yeah. <laughs> first book. Yeah. Not that great. Not yeah. that great. Uh, so basically, I've been in this mode of since since I've left formal, you know, full time ministry 
what do I want to write on? Like, and you know, I, I'm exploring all sorts of stuff, really having fun of like, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. I've tr tried to figure out like, what is it that I want to do? And so that's really what I'm kind of figuring out is like, I have the bug again, like to write, like I love writing. I'm just trying to figure out which angle <laughs> do I pick? <laughs> and so literally I reached out to, you know, the, the editor who reads my blog and I said, Hey, cause she, one of my posts the other day, she's just so encouraging. She's like, Hey, this is a great post. Can't wait for your book to come out. Like she's just constantly like encouraging me. And, uh, and I said, Hey, let's talk. You tell me what the market needs for another book. Cause like she sees it, you know, she's yep, in the industry yep, yep, yep. that you know me that you think I am the right person to write. Yep. And like, let's see if we can figure that out that conversation. So she's like, all right, let's do it after the holidays. I love it. So that's, future conversation okay. i'd love to get back on that I just don't and they know can yet. find you at uh tomorrow tomorrow's reflection so i'm actually updating all that so okay. that was the blog but a little plug here for jeremyjernigan.com is yeah. the new nice. and improved site so jeremyjernigan.com jeremyjernigan.com okay. uh that's where I, my blog is all of my content and uh really going into this year i've rebuilt it all from scratch i tried to buy this domain to see it. 17 years ago <laughs> 17 years ago this is That's this is in my space days Wait, yeah that was a long time ago. a long time ago i mean this is like before you blogging was a thing i couldn't years know. Ago? this was before smartphones oh this was before wow. all of this years ago? I mean, there's no wow. facebook there's no twitter there's no yeah, any of that stuff right and literally i had this guy that was like really into blogging he's like hey dude you need to, you need to start blogging. Oh, i'm gonna do it and I'm like well i'll buy my domain name like that makes sense and some guy had his photo he had his name and like the year he graduated and like an email address. That's all he ever had on this thing. And so Just I, really I, I like he could be found by his high school. Classmates. I guess. Yeah. He wanted them to see it. And I literally emailed him at that time. I'm like, dude, you could do this on a MySpace way nicer than this. Like, <laughs> like, he this. Was he never responded to me. So then I went and checked the back end, like on GoDaddy. And it's Maybe like, he already knew. It, it renews so. like, you know, on like the November 18th or whatever it was. Like it's how he's, he's got it up to that date. So I, Put a calendar invite every year. I would check it. He would renew it one more year, one more year, one more year Man. for 17 long years. <laughs> That's a long time. And then the other day, it really is a long, I tried to like pay an, a third party auction site to get this to negotiate. I mean, I've tried everything. That's literally a lifetime. It's ago. my white whale. If you know literature, it's my wife. Like I, I have been hunting this thing and it has eluded me. And then the other day I was like, I'm going to do this whole overhaul on my blog. I want to completely redo it. I'm going to do all these videos and like really, you know, update it. And just on a whim, I'm like, I'm just, I, you know, my heart's already, you know, set against it, but I'm just going to check. And literally it's like jeremydrinking.com is available. Like my hands shaking, I'm like <laughs> sweating. Oh my sweating. gosh, like, it's like eleven ninety nine. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> click, click, click. I mean, like literally couldn't. I was. I don't even know. I was logged in yet. I was like so. Like I, I can't believe. It. I ran upstairs. Michelle's like laying in bed for the night. I'm like, you will not believe this. I got you know. She's like. Awesome. The funny part. The funny part is him is him clicking on it as if there's another Jeremy Jerrigan out out there. Oh, there, there like, are trying to get that. Exactly. There are. <laughs> right, well, they must all out there. <laughs> so I got it. So yeah. So all that to say, I'm. This is 17 years in the making. That's exciting. This new website and a totally different back end on all the, the things. And so I'm super excited to roll it out this year. Sweet. All, all brand Very new, baby. Cool. And you're gonna oh. have some video in with the blog. Video. Posts and... I'm trying to trying to take way more uh, learning from my 14 year old. Trying to that's right. Way more video <laughs> emphasis. So. So my goal this year is to try, I've been blogging for 17 years, but to add with every post that I write, add a video that, that talks about the content as well. So people can either watch the video and read it, or if they're like, I don't want to read, I just want to watch. Or go or, to YouTube, subscribe to yep. YouTube, so do whatever. Do, do, are they going to be able to get everywhere through your new yes. website? Yep. Through so I, all, or so through I can also give you my, yep, my link okay. tree. Uh, has all of my oh, stuff. Okay, so like cool. you guys can put yeah. that in the, the, the notes. I guess I'm well like, I'm adding them up and we got like, Seven there's a lot so we got there's <laughs> so we're, we're gonna be we, we, we we'll be writing this in uh the description <laughs> for the so show long. for 17 years <laughs> hey, i'm on like the eighth draft here what I, else did I, he say something I've what got, else was it <laughs> what, he said he did something else yeah. i can't remember now life's oh, fun man. you can be whatever you want it to be right yeah well jeremy this has been a lot of fun we're looking forward to uh, to seeing the new site and Thank checking you. out all the new content. We're yeah, thrilled. Yeah. Well, thanks for having just me, guys. A pleasure to have you with us. You're the two, two of the coolest mortgage guys I know. <laughs> oh, is that what we do? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about it. That's right. Yeah. 
Ah, appreciate that. Well, cool. I'll take that. Constant well, everybody that was uh, watching or listening, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and uh, hit the bell for no no the notifications. We're on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Check us content out. creators. Check content. us out at the uh, Jay and Brian <laughs> show. It's the first time anybody's actually said that to I me. Know. Like, hey, you're a content creator. Own it. Own it. Sweet. All right. Cool, Jerry. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. Thanks again.